What's up guys, Marcus here from Studio One Expert. And in this video, I wanted to have a little bit of a look into the different recording options or the different ways to activate recording in Studio One. Now, I don't wanna confuse this with the recording modes, but what we're going to be looking at here is specifically these three areas. Uh, we're gonna be looking at pre-roll, we're gonna be looking at auto punch, and we're going to be looking at pre-count. To start off with here, uh, as most of you know, we've got this record panel, which we can activate over here. And we've got some different options in terms of the modes. So replace takes to layers. And I've gone into detail in these in some other videos and specifically how the replace mode works in conjunction with play overlaps being enabled on tracks. But in this video, what I wanted to do is more or less have a look at the ways that we can activate recording in Studio One. Okay, so to start off with here, the default, at least I believe it's the default, and the mode that I use the most is just the standard way of enabling record in Studio One, which is none of these three options are selected over here. And I'm not gonna get into uh, tape style monitoring or monitoring through different uh, softwares or anything like that. We're just gonna be talking about software monitoring. And in fact, I'm not even going to record an audio channel here with my voice, just to keep this simple. I've got this set to a different input. So the default way is pretty simple. We record enable a track, and if you wanna monitor it, we enable the software monitoring option. And then we can go ahead and we can either click this record tab over here, or as you can see, I've got this shortcut number pad, the asterisk key on my number pad. Now this right away is a simple way to engage recording. You record enable your track, you decide whether you wanna have your metronome on or off. Let's go ahead and put it on, and we push record. And now we've dropped into record mode. Now we can also drop out of record mode. Let's take that click track off. Just by clicking the record button again, we can just drop out. We can drop back in if we want by simply re-engaging the record mode over here. And you can see here it's created two files in my pool. So that's the default way that we can work in Studio One and the way that I'm sure a lot of people are using this. And then let's say I wanted to fix something at around in between bar four and bar five. I could just go back to the beginning, press play, and then I can manually drop in by clicking my shortcut over here. There's my drop in and I'm out. So we can get essentially everything that we need. We can get it done that way, but there are some different methods. I don't wanna go over them. So the first thing I wanna focus on right over here, let's clear out this audio, is this one over here. And this is called pre-count. Let's go ahead and enable that. Now, the way pre-count works is that it will give you one bar or two bars of pre-count, and that all depends on what you have set up here in the metronome setup. So if we wanted, uh, let's say, two bars of pre-count, we would enable pre-count. Now we can't enable both pre-count and pre-roll. It's one or the other, and you can see here that that graphic actually shuts off depending on what we've chosen. So let's go with pre-count over here. I've got it set to two bars, and I'm gonna go ahead and push record. And what you're gonna see happen is that in the record option down here, you're going to see a numeric countdown. Because we've got two bars at four, four, it's gonna start from eight. So go ahead and click record, and I'm gonna enable the click track for this, obviously, so we can hear this. So you're going to see the eight virtual beats, and then it's gonna drop in. And now we're recording. Let's go ahead and take that click out. Now what this works really well for is if you need to drop in on the exact downbeat of something, but you don't necessarily need to hear the whole arrangement in terms of what you've recorded, if I just wanted to drop in from bar five, but I needed two bars of pre-roll, that would be my option. I would use the pre-count. And we have a shortcut of shift C for that, or you can enable it just by clicking in the GUI. And now we're recording. And this will go on to record until you stop. Okay, so that's one option that we have. Now the next option that we have is similar but still a little bit different. And what this option is, is pre-roll. And you can kind of get a good idea of what pre-roll is simply by looking at these graphics over here. So let's enable pre-roll. We've got a shortcut of the O key, or I can just click on it. And then it's highlighted in red over here. And basically pre-roll is similar to pre-count in that we have to go to our metronome options and we've got to determine how many bars of pre-roll do we want. So for in this case, let's go with three bars of pre-roll. Go ahead and click enter. 
And now what's going to happen is we set our punch in point, which is the beginning point of where we want to start recording. So let's say we want to start recording at bar six on this track. What you're going to see happen is the pre-roll is going to be determined by what we've set up in our metronome options, which is three bars, and then it will drop into record mode at bar six. Go ahead and do that. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead and enable my click track so we can hear that. So there's our first bar, our second. And this will, of course, continue for as long as you want it to. It's kind of open-ended, as we can see by the graphic representation over here. Now, one thing to note about this, both this and pre-count, is that depending on which options you have enabled in Studio One, I'm going to hop into my preferences here, under Advanced, and if we head to Audio, we have a pre-record audio input, kind of like a buffer. I've currently got this set to five seconds, but you can set this to a different number. You could set it to 30 seconds or one minute or 10 seconds, whatever you feel is good for your workflow. Now, what happens when you have this enabled is that you can actually drag out an additional five seconds worth of audio there. So even though our punch in point or the point at which the recording started to take place was on the downbeat of bar six, we still have that information there. I always recommend anybody to put this on because this is really good. Let's say that we had a little bit of a pickup, a quarter note pickup on this, or let's say that maybe we had an eighth note pickup, something a little bit more like this, that we have that little bit of audio so that it's not cut off. Now, I gotta be honest with you, I really wish that they would incorporate the same thing on the back end here where it would go for, you know, at least a predetermined amount that you could define because that would be super, super useful. But again, pre-roll, if you want to determine a punch in point and you want the DAW to play back a certain amount of pre-roll and then punch in based on where your cursor is, in this case, bar eight, let's go and just change this to one bar of pre-roll. Go ahead and engage record mode and it's going to start from bar seven now and our click track is active bar seven and boom we're recording now and like i said this is going to continue recording until we stop this so that's the second method that i wanted to look at now the third method down here is another method this is called auto punch and what auto punch does is it determines an exact in point and an exact out point for you to record in. So for example, I could go ahead here and make a selection. Let's say that I wanted to select this area. That's where I wanted my auto punch to happen. I'm going to use my shift P shortcut, which transfers my range selection over to my loop locators. And now what happens is regardless of whether your loop is active or not, this becomes the punch in and punch out point of your recording. Now, when you work like this, we're going to go ahead and enable auto punch. And you can kind of really see by this graphic here that it shows, you know, an in point and an out point, and it shows a little bit of pre-roll and post-roll. Now, when you work in this mode, the best practice is to set the amount of pre-roll that you want to have manually. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and move back two bars, but I could move back, if I wanted to, I could move back three bars or one bar. And then all we need to do is with this mode enabled and with our loop selector set, we can go ahead and engage record. And now what's gonna happen is as soon as it gets to this point here, it's gonna drop into record mode. And then when it gets to the end of the point, it's gonna drop out. Now. As we know from the previous mode being pre-roll or even pre-count, that if we have a pre-record audio input set here, that we will have access to that. We can pull out this handle on the front end and we have those additional five seconds of audio. But if not, then we don't have it. We'll have this exact range. So one thing that I like to do when I'm working with this mode is I like to take this endpoint and I usually move it out a little bit, whether that's, you know, an eighth note or a quarter note, whatever it ends up being. Even if I cut off a little bit of the performance, if I'm using this as a punch in mode, then I will go ahead and I will drag this out point out a little bit. And what that allows me to do is as I'm recording, it's going to come in. I know I have my pre-record input set there with a bit of a buffer. And this gives me a little bit of room on the back end. 
So if the performance didn't end off perfectly and I need to drag this out a little bit to grab the sustain of a note or to make it work against an edit in the adjacent audio event, it's going to work. And then of course we know we can pull this out and we can do whatever we need here. We can add some little fades, smooth out this and make it work. Okay, so now that we've gone over all three of these, uh, let's talk about some applications on where to use them. I'm going to go ahead and highlight everything and we'll just get rid of this. Okay, so first of all, pre-count. If you're coming in exactly on the downbeat of a bar and you know exactly where you need to come in and you have the utmost confidence in yourself or the person that you're recording, then go ahead and use pre-count. If they don't need to hear anything coming up to that point and they know that they're coming in, for instance, on the downbeat of a chorus, go ahead Set your cursor at the point that you want the recording to start from. Go ahead and record enable your track. And now we will get our two bars, which is indicated by the numeric countdown over here and the click track, of course. And now we're recording. It's dropped in automatically. This is also very useful if you are working from the very beginning of your session, which starts at a downbeat and you need to hear a click track so that you can come in and be on time on bar one. This is also an option over here. We can go ahead and do the same thing. Now we're in recording and everything is doing exactly what we need it to. Now I must admit, me personally, I don't like to start my sessions on the very beginning at bar one. I will usually start them at bar three. Reason being that I like to give myself two bars of pre-roll in blank space. And the other thing is if I have a pickup, whether that's a quarter note or an eighth note or something, or if the musician or artist didn't quite start on the exact downbeat, I don't want that to be cut off. But if you do start at bar one and you're doing music that's really hard quantized, and this is an option, just enable pre-count for your punch in from the very beginning of the session and you're good to go. Okay. So now pre-roll, let's talk about when to use that. Well, if you want to automatically say, let's say that you had something and it was recorded from here to here. And at this point, the artist said somewhere around here, you know what, can we pick it up from that last bar there? I messed up. You could say, yep, no problem. I'm going to put you in from bar seven. We're going to pick up from that downbeat, but I'm going to set two bars of pre-roll that you're going to have over here. And we'll just enable that. And once the recording starts, you'll be dropped into record mode. So in that case, we just enable our pre-roll option. We set the pre-roll amount in the metronome setup over here, and we just go ahead and push the record button. It's going to give us pre-roll from bar five, bar six, and it's going to drop in at bar seven. And then the artist can continue recording their entire performance all the way across. And then if they messed up again, say somewhere about here, they say, right, I need to pick up from that point again. You say, no problem, stand by, punch them in again. And this time they're rolling and they're going to start. It's going to punch in and you continue to develop your take that way. Now, the last option over here is the auto punch. And this would be an option for me, the way I like to use auto punch is let's say that I have something recorded and it was a fantastic take, but the artist wants to just redo this section right over here. So I would just highlight this selection with my range tool, shift P to transfer that over to my loop indicators, switch over to my auto punch option, set my manual pre-roll in terms of where I want the session to start. Let's start it from bar eight, go ahead and click record. And now it's going to automatically punch in and out at those points, just where we need them to be. And of course, as we know, we can go ahead and pull out the front of this audio event based on the amount that we have set in our preferences of a, of a buffer on our record signal. And then again, like we also know, if I wanted to make sure that I don't cut off anything prematurely, I can just take this and pull it out just a little bit. Let's just hold the shift key, relieve ourselves from that grid. We'll give ourselves that same two bars of pre-roll again. I know that I have my input is going to have a little bit of extra padding, but now I've pulled out the end point a little bit just so that we don't cut anything off. And now we're good to go. So those methods are the three methods in terms of how you activate recording in studio one. Now it gets a little more complicated when you start thinking about things like for instance, the record panel. And of course we've got takes to layers, we've got the replace mode, but I just wanted to try to simplify or maybe demystify when it might be worth 
using these different three options. Because like I said, even though for the most part, I work with the default mode and I do everything manually, there are points that I find these auto punch method is useful. And there are points also when I find that the pre-roll method is useful, where I just want to set some pre-roll and have it pick up and let it do its thing. So anyways, a little long winded, but I kind of wanted to just do an in-depth overview of these three different approaches to activating recording. And hopefully you guys found some of this useful. Anyways, that's it for me. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.